how you've clicked on today's tropical tippet for Friday over here in the Atlantic. Cadia is gone, moving up here off of our tropical screen and is recurving out to the northeast. No real threat to land here. We are now left with Nate in the Gulf of Mexico and Maria east of the Antilles. We'll start off here with Nate. And yeah, I don't like the storm too much. It's been kind of a pain here. This is the system spinning away in the southeastern bay of Campeche. Very little convection, very weak cloud tops in here. If we look at the large-scale water vapor, we can see that there's a lot of dry air still off to the northwest of the system. This is getting entrained directly into to the northwestern part of the storm and as I've been saying for the last couple of days this is right in the circulation this is a dry storm and there is no way that the dry air has not been affecting Nate and yesterday what happened was interesting it looks like the curvature of the coast here provided just enough oomph for this the curvature of this coast it tends to wind storms up and it certainly did yesterday got Nate down to 995 millibars 70 mile per hour surface winds nearly technically a hurricane but it looked nothing like one and it was interesting to see that it's probably a lot weaker than that now and it really looks like nothing probably a moderate tropical storm but weakening because it's spinning in place here dry air is getting in there and actually the water south of about this line in the southern bay of Campeche is actually not that deep in terms of very deep which means he's likely cooled it off a good deal by now if he actually had 70 mile per hour winds yesterday so he may actually be upwelling or cooling off some of that water and negatively affecting himself at the moment but he is nearly stationary here and should start moving a little bit of somewhere today. These are the models on Nate, and we can see here that Remember yesterday we had three groups of models, one here, one here, one here, and we now have an entire group just here. And what this means is at some point our models are good enough that when you get them bunched up tight enough like this, you can probably bet that 99% of the time they're going to be right on the general motion. And it looks like they are doing that here, which means my motion up to the North Gulf Coast may not verify here. And we're likely going, we're more likely now to see this occur. And you can see the NHC track is down here with the models. Do you remember where the NHC track was yesterday morning? Up here. All right. So what's 400 miles among friends? They had to shift a large, large deal, too. They decided to go with the models yesterday on the consensus, which was not a great choice. Where I wasn't wrong was in saying that this was the second most likely option and that the option between made no sense whatsoever. And that's what the NHC tried to go with was the consensus in between the north option and the west option that didn't turn out so well for them and we're now down we're checking down to number two here on the table so we're probably going to go with option number two and we'll have this going into Mexico and now the intensity forecast we have to think about okay so is their forecast of a category two going to verify as it comes ashore here I, I, I don't know about it becoming a cat two if it moves away from this colder water pool and gets into the warmer water here and overcomes this dry air somehow, I could see it attaining Cat 1 if it can blow up some, con some convection over the center because it is rather symmetric right now. You could see it blow up, especially again with this curved coastline in here. really helps to wind systems up by forcing convergence of air into their center. We could see him try to attain Cat 1. I don't think Cat 2, though, but we may see him try to you know be a little bit of a storm in here but not really a big deal for Mexico of course keep a close eye on this system if you're along the Mexican coast watching this system come towards you in here now what's the good of being wrong if you don't know why you were wrong so here's why I was wrong this is the GFS 500 millibar initialization it's a little old from 10 p.m. last night but you can see Nate down here in the southern Gulf notice the ridge over here over Cuba and I was talking about this yesterday strengthening and bringing a northerly steering flow over the Yucatan and helping to bring Nate northward over here because this ridge in here was blocking movement west northwest into Mexico this is why option number three that the NHC was showing yesterday made no sense but here's what happens if we go out 24 hours we can see that the ridge is in here and the steering flow is still here to the north but look at what's happening what I failed to look at close enough was Lee's trough see Lee's trough over the central central United States positively tilted here it means that we have a fairly flat flow over the southern states which isn't curving very much and thus is increasing the heights down over the Gulf laterally moving horizontally the ridge actually has to extend itself and grow westward so instead of just a strengthening ridge over here we have it both strengthening and growing westward so by the time we get out to 48 hours look what happens they bridge this ridge builds westward and bridges with this one so all along it was not this ridge that was going to build over and force uh, Nate westward it was going to be this one to the east 
building westward and pushing Nate into the Mexican coast before he has a chance to follow the steering flow northward in here because Lee's trough is too flat. It's not digging in enough into the Gulf to bring Nate out. So that was my mistake. And that was the mistake that would have been made by any of the models that initially supported my proposition a couple of days ago. But at least we got the idea that option three towards the northern Mexico and southern Texas was not going to work, and option number two down here is more likely. And so we've gone with option number two instead of option number one. Major separation there, so it was a bad forecast. So Mexico will have to keep an eye on Nate here. Here's Maria, and we'll go over to Maria here. And we can see a nice large blow up of thunderstorms going off with Maria right now. I didn't throw up the recon data, but they're not finding a very well defined center. But there is a large area, if we pull up the floater here, where is the floater? The floater's over here. There's a large area of southwesterly inflow coming into Maria. There is still kind of a circulation here, a little bit of an elongated circulation, but there is still one. She's a weak tropical storm by all indications of the recon data, but there's a large area of thunderstorms going off here, lots of heat getting released. And and if we look over at the water vapor imagery, we can see that her main hindrance is we got some dry air off to the south here. We've also got this upper low, see this counterclockwise spin to the northwest of Maria. And this is inflicting some shear on the northwestern side of the system. But there's a lot of heat getting released by these thunderstorms, latent heat. That will eventually force this upper low to move out somewhere and move out of the way within a couple of days. Which means that by the time she gets north of the Caribbean, probably going to be in a more favorable environment. Now it does look like she's going to move west-northwest towards the Puerto Rico area and then end up somewhere just northeast of the Bahamas in a couple of days. And in Puerto Rico I'd be preparing for a solid moderate tropical storm, nothing too fancy. We're probably not going to see a hurricane in this area until she's north of the Caribbean, but do be prepared for a potent tropical storm in here. You can see that she looks big and scary, so that should be reason enough to expect some nasty conditions for the next few days in the Antilles Islands. And of course, once she gets north of the Caribbean again, she'll probably become a hurricane. The problem is that Katia just moved out of this area. So guess what? The water is very cold in here. And you'll see that by the end of this video, there's a big cold tongue of water. Eventually, she'll probably weaken if she passes close enough to Bermuda. And we can see that the models generally agree on the track towards Puerto Rico or the Virgin Islands and then out and then near Bermuda. And this is the area where she would probably weaken due to Katia's cold water. But in here, she could be a hurricane. So we'll be watching her. Don't 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 stop watching her if you're on the eastern seaboard. Just because these storms, you know, you want to watch them until they're passing you. Right now the models agree with my idea that she's going to miss the United States here. And she probably will, but don't take your eyes off a storm until it's actually passing you in the, this area of the world because things have happened before in history and you don't want to be surprised again. Just watch her. Just be at tropics. Be aware of what's going on in the tropics. This is day four on the GFS ensembles. The reason Maria should leave is this is Lee's old trough in here has to get rescued by a trough to the north over Canada swinging down that will bring a big trough over the eastern United States. And You can see the steering flow is out to the northeast here so if Maria is moving up in here she should curve out fairly sharply. She'll, she might be looking scary getting in here, but she'll curve out sharply towards the area between Cape Hatteras and Bermuda, probably without being too much of an issue, though Bermuda should be watching to see if they can get the eastern side of the system. And if we look ahead of Maria here real quick, if we go out to day 10 on the GFS ensembles, look what's happened now. The trough is gone, and what we have is, notice all the blue up here? This is below normal heights, indicating a strong Icelandic low. That is a positive NAO in here with ridging down here, a, po a strong, strong area of cyclonic activity going on near England. So we have a strong positive NAO, which means that the ridge is stronger down in here because we've got sinking air. We've had a bunch of hurricanes out in this area now. Now it's time to let that air sink for a while. So we have stronger ridging in here. We have ridging up in southeast Canada being helped by the Icelandic low in here. And now we have the opportunity for activity to be pushed farther down here due to this ridge. And now we're focusing our, eye, our eyes on the Caribbean, Bahamas, Southern Gulf of Mexico region. And then look what we have. We have a ridge here, we have a ridge here, and then the break in between. So that means we have to watch for activity in here trying to move northward towards the southeastern United States and the Gulf of Mexico region. So this is something we're going to have to be watching. And notice what's happening with the water temperatures. These are the sea surface temperature anomalies. We've had 
Katya go up here. We add Irene, cool water from Irene. We've had Katya, big cold tongue from Katya. She's a big storm now. And we're going to have Maria also contributing to cold water. She moves out here, cooling all this water in here. If all this water is cold, that means that air is sinking in here. And it, as the air sinks, it spreads out at the surface. Some of it spreads out to the south in here. And so some of that ends up converging over the Caribbean as that air comes, piles up, and forces upward motion over the areas of warm water in the Caribbean area, which means we have to start watching this area to fire up a little bit more over the next couple of weeks. So between 10th and 25th, I think we will see a storm somewhere in this area. And we can see what's going on now on the models. The European Ensemble mean day 10, check it out. We have a mean area of low pressure sitting in the Western Caribbean with a good pressure gradient to the north of it. And then the Canadian Ensemble's day 11, see that we have low pressure showing up in the Northwest Caribbean and near Cuba by this time. So the models, I think, are starting to pick up on the hints that I've been talking about for a week now about why this period from September 15th to 25th, the third week in general, should have activity in this area of the world that we are going to need to watch for, given that the pattern supports it. We've had cool, it's become cold over the southern U.S., so sinking air here. We've gotten cold water out here, so sinking air there bolsters upward motion to the south of all that, and we're going to have to start watching the Western Caribbean to finally fire up for this later part of September. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.